Good afternoon, everyone. As Kat said, thank you. I am, I'm Mark Wade. I've been writing comics and graphic novels since they invented paper. And uh, I'm here today to talk to you about some of the specific challenges that comics and graphic novels face going into the digital medium. Uh, I thought we'd start with a nice Valentine's Day slide uh, in those traditional red and white colors. Is there anyone out there? Oh, God. Um, happy Valentine's Day. This is my love letter to comics, is basically what I'm about to go through with you. Uh, comics has, as I said, a specific challenge adapting to digital media that a lot of other print media don't. And that is that we are in a portrait format almost exclusively. And there's a reason for that. I mean, we've been doing portrait style comics forever. Uh, again, taller than the ROI. This is the medium we work in. And the artists and writers who work in it work using that space with purpose. This is a really good example. I'm pulling it from uh, a book drawn by an artist named Chris Somney. And look at how the page is designed. It's designed to take advantage of that vertical format. The, the eye is led specifically down the page to certain images and goes that way. But if we go to a landscape format with that same sort of page, if we just say to, as, as some of the bigger publishers have been doing with their material, if we say, okay, let's just take that image and slap it on a landscape format, you end up with something like this. You end up with, hello, oh, the green button. You end up with uh, something that doesn't quite work. You know, we'll start up here with this one panel. Oh, look, there's more stuff down here. Let me just scroll down and see what else we've got. Oh, look, there's another image of Daredevil, and I can read that balloon, but now there's something underneath that and then we get to the bottom of the page. That's, that's, having, that's what it looks like on your laptop. That's what it looks like on many of your mobile devices. You still get the story, and you still get to read all the words, and you still kind of get to see all the pictures, but I hope this is making sense. You're not getting the, 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 the canvas as it was intended to be presented. You're not taking advantage of the things that digital can do. Instead, what you're doing is akin to reading uh, you know, a, a book or looking at a movie through a cardboard tube. You're just sort of seeing bits and pieces. You're not seeing the overall whole. Um, you know, here's another example. We've got, and again, these are fine comics by friends of mine. I give you a shout out right now so you don't come after me when all this is over with. But uh, they're not made for landscape. This one, a big two-page spread from a recent comic. But Wait, now it's wide, but it's way too tall for the space. And I see that there's stuff at the bottom of the page, and hey, let me shrink it down. Okay, now it fits sideways on my iPad, but I'm 50 years old, and my eyesight isn't what it used to be, and that's four-point type, and I can't deal with that. So let's go, you know, make it bigger again by going back to the portrait format. But now there's stuff over to the side, and I'm having to scroll over to get the whole sense of the story, and I'm back and forth. And I know this is not the most huge problem in the world for people is scrolling back and forth, but you see what I'm saying, it's, you're, it's, it, how many people out there remember, are old enough to remember square television sets? Or, uh, and the idea that you would do movies in pan and scan format. This is this, this, this. You can still tell the story, but you're not taking advantage. What I really wanted to do was find a way to take advantage of the digital space. Um, there was a forerunner in this. His name was Warren Ellis, is Warren Ellis. He's a brilliant digital and, uh, and literary visionary. Uh, he did a comic called uh, um, this one right here. This one's Freak Angels, thank you. Um, he did a comic called Freak Angels a few years ago that was digital only, but again, even Warren wasn't able at that point to take advantage of the medium because this is what it looks like on a browser. You've still gotta go up and down, you're not getting the whole picture. We tried solving this as a medium a few years ago with something that we call motion comics. Some of you may have seen some of these over the years. It's the idea that, well, if you just take these static images and add a little bit of motion to them or some sound effects or voiceovers or whatever, then they look a little livelier on the page, they're not just static pictures. Well, that's all well and good, but I kind of think of motion comics as the devil's tool, honestly, because 
they are many things with voiceovers, with music and so forth, but they're not comics. The North Star philosophy that I have followed in all of this exploration is that what makes comics comics, what makes graphic novels a unique medium is that like any other form of reading, you are in control of the pace at which you absorb the story. Like any other reading, and the moment you add sound effects, the moment you add bells and whistles and movement and so forth, any element of time that you add to that externally, that means that as a reader, I'm just not I'm just kind of being led around by the nose. Then it's just the ne then it's just sort of cheap animation, and that doesn't seem to be the way to do it either. So we're still stuck with how do we do this? So I've been putting my head together uh, with a few other guys for a while, trying to come up with a way around this. And about a year ago, I launched a digital comics website called Thrillbent, thrillbent.com, uh, where we are giving away free web comics and using it as a platform to experiment with some of the digital storytelling tools that let you retain what makes comics special and yet make them unique to the digital device and do things you can't do in print. So with your permission, I'd like to walk you through a few examples of some of the storytelling that we're doing. Now, the most important thing to remember here is that I'll, obviously, because not everybody in this room can have a slide clicker, although if they could, I would do that, uh, but because you can't, one guy has to be in charge, let's make it me, I'll move ahead, but I want you to know that all I'm doing is turning pages at, at, my, at my pace. As the slides are going on, it's as if you were turning the pages yourself. I'm not leading you on by the nose. There's, nothing, there's no mechanism in our reader that forces you to move at a certain pace. So let's start with this sequence. Well, actually, this is actually a, a good shot of the web page itself, my apologies. Uh, this, is our, this is our landing page. You can see that we do a bunch of different material. We do some superhero -y material, we do some horror material, we do some science fiction material. It's all free to read. We upload our own torrents. We make it downloadable. But Mr. Wade, how do you make money off that? And how do you monetize? We'll get to that in a moment. Because um, that is the number one question that we are asked. And we have a good answer. But let's get back to this. So this is this again. This is what the Thrillbent page looks like. But to go to a specific example, here's one of our sequences. We've got our hero, Galahad. He's come home to his mansion, and he's dealing with some bad news, obviously. Turn the page, and this. Turn the page, and this. Turn, 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 turn. What I like about that sequence is that what you're doing is things you can't do in print. You're putting certain images forth, but then you're adding and subtracting new images to give a whole new context to the whole sequence. Here's another example. Galahad is in his car. He's eavesdropping on a man up in the window there. And he's looking at his iPad. Studying turn, turn. That can't be good. And there you go. Another, again, certain things that need the reader to ha you know, give, have more weight, certain storytelling elements that the reader needs to dwell on and absorb more stay on the screen longer. Certain other ones we can move in and out. Um, but that's another example. Let me give you one more example real quick. In this sequence, if any of you out there are also writers, you know that putting exposition across is just the worst thing in the world, especially in comics. Because the thing about comics is, it's a visual medium. You're dealing with pictures. You absolutely have to bear in mind that it, even if you've got an entire huge murder mystery subplot to spell out to your readers, it needs to be visual and nothing lays on the page more than just balloon after balloon after balloon of dialogue and nothing interesting about the art. Trust me, as somebody who edits and publishes and writes, nothing makes me want to turn to drink faster than opening up a comic or a graphic novel and it's 12 pages of guys in business suits standing around a 
conference table talking about stuff. I can get that on television for free. <laughs> I don't have to pay for it, and it moves, and it's interesting. Um, I'm off topic, but they gave me a few extra minutes. Every writer who's ever come to me and pitched something like the opening of Reservoir Dogs as a comic where it's six guys sitting around a dinner table talking about Madonna, I throw them out the window because that's awesome use of screen time. It is terrible use of comic book real estate because as a reader, I've just paid two or three bucks and I'm already five pages in and nothing's happening except I'm watching guys sit around eating. I can do that at home. But in this case, I had a lot of pipe to lay. I had a lot of exposition to give out about what's happening in the story. So I set out this, and this is part of the reason I showed you the previous scene. So I've got these two characters who sort of need to explain things to each other. Don't worry about reading every word. They're all diamonds, but you don't have to read every word. Um, they're talking about what's gone on. So what I was able to do was this. Just use one static piece of artwork in the background as she's explaining, and then pulling those earlier images from a previous week's installment and using them there as bridging techniques. So, so, it, so it makes it, I hope, a lot more interesting to read and look at than if there were six screens just like this one. One more, because this is my favorite. Galahad's fallen in an aquatic tank. What's that in the background? Piranha? How many piranha? Wait, yes, piranha. Wait, how many piranha? Lots of piranha. The thing I like about this, the thing that I feel good about the things that, that, that my collaborators and myself have sort of worked with other web comics creators and listened to what everybody else who's in web comics and doing this kind of thing has to say and sort of amalgamating this into this format is that it's taking advantage of what digital does. You can do this in print, but it'll take you five pages and you've eaten up a lot of real estate and it doesn't have the same impact, I don't think. I think this actually, without breaking my arm, patting myself on the back, I think that kind of looks pretty neat. And it makes me want to read more. Um, so that's what we're doing with Thrillbent. This is the way it looks on a browser. Um, again, formatted specifically for that space so that you're not having to scroll up and down. Landscape format, we optimize the fonts for the size. It's all responsive in, in its viewing, so no matter what platform you're looking at it on, it molds to fit, whether it's your iPhone or your iPad or your Android device or whatever. Uh, the panels load dynamically so that you're not constantly having to reload the page on every page turn, which would be the equivalent of turning a page in your book and then going up to get a drink and then coming back every time you turn the page. You don't want to do that. Um, it's worked quite well for us so far. And when I say quite well, very pleased. I, I, would be, I would be remiss if I didn't say that the intent here was not to become billionaires by creating a whole new way of doing comics. Comics are actually doing quite well as a medium, uh, regardless of whether they're web comics or print comics or whatever. Uh, publishing is up in those arenas, which surprises me as much as anybody, not because I don't have faith in the content, but just because it's not a print-friendly world right now. But still, comics are doing well, but I, I wanted to to take advantage of what we can do here and try to break the medium. The, 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 problem with, the problem with print comics has been the same with all print. Let's pull some numbers out of the air. Let's say I've got a comic book that is selling for $3.99. That's about the average price right now. Most of you have probably not been in a comic shop in a long time. And the fact that I just said $3.99 made you fall over backwards. Um, believe me, we know it's a lot of money. but. For $3.99, I, as a publisher, am, the, the, the greatest expense that I have as a publisher is not the content, it's not the production values, it's not the marketing, it's not the overhead, it's the printing. It didn't used to be that way. It hasn't been that way for a long time, but in the last four or five years, like every other print medium that is housed and, and talked about under this roof over these last three days, costs keep going up and up to the point where to produce a $4 comic, I'm getting about $1.60 back from the distributor. Of that $1.60, it can cost me as much as a dollar just to print the thing. Like another 50 or 60 cents has to cover every other aspect of production. This is not a winning model, and it's not going to get any better, because print is only going to continue to escalate in price. 
So the end game here was how do we do something digitally specific and at the same time not lose our shirts by going into print first, paying these whopping printing bills, hoping we sell enough to stay afloat, and then putting it digitally into the back end. Instead, we flipped the, dy the dynamic and we said, let's go digital first, we'll give it away for free, we will get the exposure, we will, we will get it out there, people will come to us, and then the model revenue that we've set up is, this is my favorite part, we do these weekly. We do the each installment anywhere between 10 and 12 screens a week. We've been taking four weeks at a time, packaging them as a separate document, adding a little bit of bonus material, nothing substantial, just a, you know, like a new cover and maybe a couple of new text pieces, just, again, nothing to affect the story, and then selling them through uh, Comixology, which is th the main comics digital distributor uh, in the medium. When we sell through Comixology, those sales alone recoup our production costs. I don't see a downside to this at all. Uh, I don't, doesn't mean we're making a billion dollars, it doesn't mean I'm taking a yacht back from the convention, back where I live. What it does mean is that nobody gets rich but everybody gets paid. What it means is that's just one revenue stream. There are other revenue streams out there. There's an iPad app that we're going to be doing. There's, you know, there's, we haven't even touched on do we do something with Kickstarter. There's so many other revenue streams that we can play around with. And because comics is not a terribly high overhead medium, we can afford to play around and see what works. Like again, the idea that one revenue stream covers the cost of our production is an enormous weight off my mind. Um, would you guys like to see a couple more examples of what we've been able to do digitally? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Cat applauds, yes, because Cat understands that I got an extra 10 minutes at the last second. Here's another really good example. This is from a comic that we did called Pax Arena, uh, done by two French creators who uh, are brilliant. And yeah, we've been doing multinational things and we've been doing uh, uh, international comics on Thrillbent as well. So, turn, turn. All you're doing is turning pages. There's nothing else in that. Here's another one. There you go. I hope that's of interest. I hope that I'm making myself clear when I say that what excites me about this is that it's static images. It's still, on a craft level, what I've been doing my entire adult life, what an entire industry has been doing since the 30s, what we're doing is framing it in a different way where function doesn't have to follow form, where once more, again, form follows function. So, uh, one last example and then I'll give you your stage back. But this is from a, a book we did called City of the Dead on Thrillbent. Just a real brief sequence, but I like what you'll see here is the idea that you can juxtapose images in a way that you have several things happening on the page at once, and yet it never, at no time does it really feel confusing. And this may be my favorite. Oh, look over there. Anyway, that's, that's the examples I brought with me. There's plenty more. 
Um, we've been doing it for free online. We're going to continue to do free material online and then find avenues of monetization down the road. Um, but so far, not bad for three guys who kind of do this in their spare time. Um, this is kind of what we built in the last year. I hope that even if you're not into comics and graphic novels, if that specific medium doesn't speak to you, I hope this is giving you a little bit more food for thought about how you can take what you're doing and really think outside of what the traditional print page looks like. The beauty of digital devices, and I'm sure this has been said a thousand times in the last three days, much better than I'm going to say it, but the beauty of digital devices is we're not selling you pictures of books. We're selling you a whole different publishing and reading experience. And, you know, I'm having a great time with it. This is where my heart is right now. This is the kind of storytelling I want to keep doing. We're going to find new ways of doing it. We're going to try some stuff that's going to fail. We're going to try some stuff that's going to succeed. And you know what? If the worst case scenario is this, if we do this for a couple of years and we don't make any real money at it and I get hit by a bus or whatever and it has to go away, if the next guys in digital comics publishing or digital graphic novel publishing want to go through forensically the wreckage of what we've left behind and go, okay, well, that worked. And actually, that kind of worked pretty well. Let's try these things. And they want to use that stuff. That's fine. I would consider that a win. Because all I really want to do is take the football another 30 yards down the field. And if you if you're excited about this kind of stuff, if you want to participate, if you want to give feedback, if you, and if you want to hear about it more, go to thrillbent.com. All the contact information is there. Please answer all your questions. If you've got new ways of thinking about doing it, if you've found other things at this conference that this connects to in your brain and you want to share that, feel free. I, I'll do the same with you. Thanks so much for your time. I very much appreciate it. Thank you.